Welcome to this Debaco University video. We're going to be going over nitrogen fertilizers impact on CBD and THC concentrations in cannabis, giving you an indication of how much nitrogen fertilizer you should be giving and what might be too much and what are the negative effects by giving too much nitrogen fertilizer. All right, let's get into the video here. Now, this is the research article, so if you wanna find out some more information about this or look at some more of the materials and methods, you're more than welcome to via the link provided here. But I'm gonna give you a general summary and kind of give you a grower viewpoint of this. So uh, kind of most important here is the actual research trials uh, that they did and the results that they got. So looking at the uh, graphs that we see over here, note that the total biomass and total cannabinoid concentrations in percent dry weight are on the y-axis, the vertical axis, and this is versus the measured nitrogen concentrations in percent dry weight. That'll be on the x-axis here. So it's kind of what you're looking at. They have some correlation lines. Now the triangular points that you see kind of here and here uh, identify plants in the north and west facing edge of the glasshouse, and that's where these plants were grown as part of this study. Uh, we're considered above the regression line, as we can see here, the regression line is here. Uh, and average had higher values than the dot points, and the dot points are those little circles. And those dot points in the same graphs were indicated plants not on the edges. So the triangle plants uh, here uh, give you the idea that those were on the sun edge and the circles were not on the sun edge. So this also speaks to the importance of light and concentration of light, the intensity of light your plants are getting, how that can influence things as well. They took that into consideration here. Now looking at the general trend, we could see that biomass in grams here is increasing, uh, which is, you know, everyone thinks that'd be better, bigger, quote, better plants, however, We'll notice as the biomass increase, we see all these other regression lines going the opposite direction. And those are looking at total uh, CBC, total CBD, and total THC. There's a negative correlation there. They also did a little study on pruning. I'm going to focus more here on the nitrogen uh, treatment as well. Now, as I said, it's an inverse relationship here. So the increase in biomass is nitrogen concentration increased from three to six was approximately 100%. And this is why you wanna be careful of the scales. So if we look at the y-axis, just to go back for a second here, we could see biomass in grams is 100 to 200. So this is like doubling in size here, just to give you a little bit of idea what those numbers actually mean. Uh, however, the corresponding decrease, as I pointed out, in the cannabinoid concentration was approximately 67%. This entails a net decline in yields in terms of grams as nitrogen concentration increases. So as you get excessive in nitrogen, and that comes higher and higher, your cannabinoid concentration is, cannabinoid concentration is decreasing. That's the little brackets mean here. And I saw the example of the seesaw here because as nitrogen is going up, it's an inverse relationship. The cannabinoid concentration is decreasing, which, of course, growers don't want to have. So kind of your general key points is that biomass was strongly and positively related to nitrogen fertilizer. Cannabinoid concentrations were strongly negative related to nitrogen. Uh, and plants in the sun edge tended to have higher biomass levels and cannabinoid concentrations compared to those grown in the row. Now those high nitrogen levels, those high nitrogen, those nutrients raised in those high nitrogen um, levels in both the inflorescence, which is the flower, and also the leaf plant matter. For very high levels of nitrogen nutrition, which is defined as 500 milligrams per milliliter, inflorescence and cannabinoid concentrations decrease significantly with little change in total biomass. And leaf biomass also increased quite a bit. With higher nitrogen supplied stem diameter also increase. This is a sign of kind of a nitrogen bloat, growers may say to their plant. And the net effect of increasing nitrogen nutrition on the total yield of cannabinoids was negative because of the increase in biomass, which was also, uh, which was only significant in the leaves, kind of that extra giant growth you might have on the leaves. This was not enough, though, to offset the constant decrease in cannabinoid concentrations. So again, we're getting a little to these excessive levels, getting a bigger plant, but we're decreasing our total yields, which is what are not, should, should not be our goal. Now looking at our cannabinoid concentration as well as cannabinoid yield per plant were decreased with the increased supply. So how do we kind of explain this? And this is kind of looking at a general fertilizer curve. 
So as we get our nutrient supply, as we go from left to right, we're getting more fertilizer. And on the y-axis here, we're looking at crop yield, higher yield being better. Well, there's a certain point that if you are growing in soil and don't add any fertilizer, you're going to get a certain yield. Uh, but of course, probably going to be below what uh, growers are aiming for, so they add fertilizer. Now, you can add fertilizer and you have this kind of initially almost a uh, linear increase, but then it kind of like levels off. It kind of like reaches this kind of peak. And there's this maximum yield point. Now, if you keep adding fertilizer, beyond that maximum yield point, what ends up happening is that you start to get a decrease in return. Not only are you increasing your cost, but you're going to decrease on return. That's what we're seeing here with the correlation with the nitrogen fertilizer numbers. So very high concentrations of fertilizer uh, are not advised because of lower cannabinoid concentration and yield. And the optimum nitrogen uh, nutrition is likely between 60 and 120 milligrams per liter. I also did it here in ounces per gallon. And this is a range. So it's a pretty big range, uh, but it is a range. So you want to make sure you're definitely not outside that range because you'll start to get over to where that yield curve is going down. Now, pruning's impact, I just wanted to mention it here that they did a double stem pruning was applied as an additional treatment to investigate efficiency and, and biomass increase. The pruning treatment did not increase cannabinoid concentration or affect biomass when measured at the final harvest. So I just wanted to make note of that. It was on the graphs that we saw earlier. Now, study also evaluated the sun edge uh, plants. I want to just touch on that because across all treatments as an artifact of this trial, sun edge plants were the most directly exposed to sunlight showed a trend towards more biomass and higher cannabinoid concentrations according to the model that they did statistics-wise. Self-shading of plants can limit the production of cannabinoids, so it's important to consider plant density and light intensity and also the spectrum your plants are receiving for those growing indoors. However, these results can only be considered preliminary because, and it warrants further research, but just showing you for those growing maybe indoors, how can we relate this study that we want to really make sure we're getting high par to our plants uh, and across all areas, uh, as we saw a dramatic effect here with the sun edge plants versus versus those grown in row, how that can affect things. So it's more than just nitrogen, but that is important consideration. You don't want to over add it because you'll simply be reducing your yields and increasing your costs. So hopefully that's helpful. There's other videos on this channel about nitrogen fertilizer, but this gives you another study to investigate.